Welcome to the channel where I help you better understand supply chain management and planning. Today we're talking about production activity control. Think of production activity control, which I'll be referring to as PAC, like an orchestra conductor in a grand symphony of manufacturing. It coordinates various instruments, these are the resources and workstations, to play in harmony to produce the goods and be in sync with the rhythm, which is the timeline and the demand. There are several inputs to production activity control. The first is the master production schedule. The MPS is like the sheet music for our orchestra. It's the master plan that outlines what products are to be produced, in what quantities, and by when. This helps in determining the resource allocation and setting the pace for all the other activities. Then there's a bill of materials. This is a list of all the raw materials, sub-assemblies, and other resources needed to produce the end product. You can think of it as a chef's recipe detailing each ingredient and its quantity. Knowing your current stock is also crucial. It's like checking your pantry before you start cooking to see what ingredients you already have. Overlooking this could result in shortages or overstock, which leads us to resource availability. Just like how a band needs to know which musicians and instruments are available for a gig, a manufacturing unit needs to know the availability of the machines, manpower, and all the other resources. If a component is unavailable, then one needs to know its lead time. Imagining you're cooking a multi-course meal. Each dish has its own preparation and cooking time. Similarly, lead time estimates help in understanding how long each process will take in the production cycle. All of this is so the customer order can be fulfilled properly. The audience of the orchestra, who here are the customers, makes a specific request, these are the orders, and the orchestra, or the manufacturing unit, needs to be flexible enough to accommodate all of those. These orders guide the fine-tuning of the master schedule. Past performance can guide future conduct. So knowing data serves as a kind of rehearsal tape, letting you review what worked and what didn't in prior performances. Once the input is gathered and analyzed, the production activity control takes over to release work orders. A work order is like a specific set of instructions given to each musician in the orchestra. It states what to play, when to play, and how to play it. Based on the input, resources are assigned to different tasks. This can mean reserving particular machines for specific jobs, much like reserving seats in a theater for VIP guests. Sequencing and scheduling is like the playlist of our concert. It dictates the order in which the activity should recur, ensuring that everything flows seamlessly. But even the best laid plans can go awry, which is why we continuously monitor. Continuous monitoring helps in making real-time adjustments, like a conductor correcting musician who just hit a wrong note. This leads to quality checks. Before a final bow, there is always a sound check. Quality checks ensure that the product meets the specified criteria, making sure that the performance is worthy of an encore. Once all of that is said and done, it's time to document everything that had occurred. This is akin to recording the concert for posterity and critique. Detailed documentation aids in future planning and serves as a legal record. And so, there you have it. An in-depth look at what goes into production activity control and how work orders are released in manufacturing. It's a fascinating interplay of planning, resources, and real-time adjustments, much like putting on a live show for an expectant audience.